Well, I can only speak on my own behalf. Obviously, we spoke about uh, power of, you know, visualization and, and, and preparing yourself for possible scenarios. And I obviously try to play the match in my mind before I go on the court. Uh, and I, you know, always try to imagine myself as a winner. I think there is a power to that. And, um, but also there, there has to be next to the willpower, uh, you know, uh, strength that comes not just from your physical self but from your your mental and emotional self and and it's i i think it's well for, for me at least it's a constant battle within you know more than uh than than what happens outside uh it's it's really not the situations that you um experience that are affecting you but how you internally experience those situations how you accept them how you live through them so you know, I, I just told myself before the match, I'm, I'm you know, going to try to switch off as much as I can from what is happening around us and, and just be, be there, be present. Um, and, you know, there's not a specific formula to find the courage. I mean, at least in, from, from my perspective, you, you know, you can go all out and just, you know, cl close your eyes and just hit the best ball as hard as you can, and then you can call that courage. But I, I you know, I wouldn't necessarily call it courage in, in some particular situation. So you need to be consistently, uh, sorry, constantly playing well throughout five hours if you want to win the match like this. So, you know, uh, I guess there is an endurance part, and, and but you know, I think there's always this self belief and, 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 you have to keep reminding yourself that that you are there for a reason and that you are better than the other guy. And as as hard as the moment you know uh, is that you are in, you know the more you have to remind yourself, the more you have to talk to yourself. I mean that's you know that's at least in, in my case. I wanted to stop it where he was just reiterating the point that it's not about what happens around you or outside of you. It's what happens inside of you and how you relate to the things that happen outside of you. And that is ultimately probably one of the most important pieces of wisdom that has been passed down to us for thousands of years from a different philosophical wisdom traditions. So you see it here, he's talking about, it's not about what happens outside of you or around you, it's what happens inside of you and what you think about the things that happen to you that matters. In his case, it might be, oh, the ref, called that shot out when it was actually in and some players probably lose it in those moments lose their focus lose their uh, ability to perform at their best and that's what separates as you said david the elite elite from the elite is their ability to work through those moments of frustration and whatnot and get back to the their performing at their best yeah i really like that about his the the battle is really on the inside you're really fighting yourself in some ways the other thing he said, there's two other points Djokovic made, um, was one was about positive visualization. Mm. And this raises something interesting that um, some of my sort of like tennis colleagues, we debate whether we should be preparing for the worst. Like when a match starts, should you be preparing for like, uh oh, I'm, I'm losing. Okay, I, I saw this happen. Like, I'm pre I've prepared for that. I'm prepared for not playing well. I'm prepared for feeling tired. I'm prepared for feeling like my body is tight or I'm distracted. I'm ready for that. Djokovic is suggesting you have to sort of visualize being better than the other person. Visualize the match in a way that you're winning it. And maybe neither, maybe it's not either one or the other. Um, but I wonder in other life scenarios, like Mike, before you go mm -hmm. uh, give it, to, you know, if you if you're give a, a lunch and learn or a talk to a client and the audio visual doesn't work, like it's one thing to be like, I'm going to give an amazing talk and everything's going to work really well. And the audience is going to give me a standing ovation and give me really great questions. But maybe we sometimes need to prepare for like, all right, my mic's not working. Someone asked a rude question. Um, the organizer's not here. Uh, so how do you, th how do you think about visualization? Should it just be only as sort of Djokovic is suggesting where it's this positive winning mentality, which I think is super important for the specifics of what he does, but maybe in other aspects of life, to what extent do we need to visualize some catastrophe <laughs> in order to address it effectively when, when it, it might sort of emerge or might show itself? Yeah, it's, 
I think it's important to separate this specific example of he knows he's the best or one of the best. <laughs> so it, it's perhaps he has the privilege or the, that's not the right word, the uh, luxury of, of being able to visualize himself winning because he's done it so much. There is tremendous power in visualizing experience. So in some sense, we're training our minds to be in that scenario if it is to arise. And there's lots of sort of science and experience backing that up. I think visualizing the worst case scenarios or the things that could go wrong is helpful. Although this is gets interesting too, because we don't want to get into over worrying or catastrophizing or assuming all these horrible things are going to happen. So it, it, I think it's a bit of a balance. I think for me, the most helpful thing, probably due to my limitations uh, intellectually or psychologically, to imagine all these kind of things. For me, the best thing I can possibly do is just practice learning to be present with whatever is happening. And that goes back to what he said, the battle within versus without. So if I'm serene, as he said earlier, or if I'm relatively balanced from day to day, then when things happen that are difficult and hard, I know that I can work through those things. I do think Michael Phelps, maybe we'll do a video on him. He's another incredible specimen. And, and all these athletes are so good at the power of visualization. And I think they have a very specific task and a very specific outcome that they're seeking. So in those situations, maybe it works better, so to speak, uh, to visualize your desired outcome. Otherwise, um, I do think there's power in visualizing worst case scenarios or perhaps even just if this bad thing happens, here's how I will respond. Mm -hmm. Right. That kind of thing, as opposed to trying to imagine some specific outcome. I'm not sure. And it makes sense. Yeah, it, may, it makes a lot of sense. It, it sounds like what you're getting at is the relationship between visualization and skill development. So you can't just visualize doing something or preparing for a certain set of conditions or circumstances. You also have to practice those skills to be able to perform in a certain way. Mm. So probably what I don't know if I don't know if Djokovic will mention this later in the clip, but he he trains so hard at specific shots and specific say footwork patterns and specific movements so he can then visualize himself doing those things mm -hmm. he's practicing the things that he's visualizing himself doing so i think that also is re a really important piece i think you i think visualization on its own probably doesn't work you probably have to practice you know if you're giving a talk maybe you say that or or you're going on a date or you're about to or a job interview or whatever you sort of have to practice some of the things you might say yes. in a mirror yes just so you have that skill in your mind ready to sort of be, you know, be sort of applied in the moment. Um, and then that combined with visualization can be very powerful. But I think sometimes maybe we can't do visualization if we don't have the skill, if we're not practicing that right. specific skill right. on its own <laughs> yeah. in more maybe calmer controlled situations. Right, right. Because then it can spill off into unbalanced worrying and that kind of thing. Yeah, or I, or I can visualize playing well, but if I haven't practiced. Right. Then my visualiz then um, then you can start <laughs> right. to really get into right, some bad right, mental right, habits right, of right. like, wait, I visualized doing so great and now look at me, I must be a loser. <laughs> as opposed to no, no, I just didn't physically and prepare in, in the right way. Yeah. So the relationship between mental and physical preparation is super interesting. Yes, yes. And he sort of mentioned that earlier too, I think. Yeah. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise have a great day. Peace out.